meeting. So join me, welcome God's servant. One of the men God used to mentor me and is still using him to mentor me the more. And that is Dr. Imajo Wachuku as he takes over to lead us. Sir, please take over. Thank you so much, Pastor Light. This is quite inspirational. Thank you, Sister Mary. You've, you've done a very good um, work bringing us thus far. My prayer is that the Lord will help us set us on fire this morning. Amen. Let that fire burn everywhere we are. Amen. I'm so, so impassioned by this issue of contending for the mantle of Jonathan Edwards. Mm. Because in this very season, the Lord is putting me and the congregation I serve through a period of revival. And it's been very, very life-changing. Very, very life-changing. Already the mantles of Jonathan Edwards Amen. have been introduced by Sister Mary. And already Pastor Light has given us a very good intro to what it takes to receive these mantles. And the most important one is that you must be hungry, you must be thirsty. And I want to assure us that what God wants to do is something that is beyond the few of us gathered here. Because revival, which is the very, the most important mantle that we find in the life of Jonathan Edwards is something that is contagious. So Once you contact the fire of revival, everyone around you is subject to burn with that same fire. So Once you contact the fire of revival, there is no hiding place for the devil anywhere mm. around you. Hallelujah. And my prayer is that God will make this to come to pass in our individual lives, in our congregations, Amen. in our communities, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Already God has given us an assurance in Matthew 7, 11. He says, eat ye who are evil. Know how to give good gifts to your children. Why do you think that himself, our heavenly father, will not give us better things? Yes, better wow. things. Revival is one of the things that yes, if you impassionately ask God, you cannot escape the fire that is coming right down upon you from heaven. Yes, there is what is called the spirit of revival. In fact, what you are calling mantles here are actually impartations of the spirit. Mm. Jonathan Edwards was best known as a father of revival. Mm. And as we pray this morning, there will be an impartation mm. of the kind of spirit that was on Jonathan Edwards Amen. on all who have come to this altar this morning sincerely. Amen. Uh, ingredients of revival that we see in the life of Jonathan Edwards includes, like Mary has told us, the fear of God. The fear of God is also a spirit that you pray for. The heart of man is evil, is desperately wicked. And I want to tell you that anyone that has not been imparted by the Spirit of God can be as ordinary, as wicked, as terrible as any other human being on earth. Mm. But when you are gifted with the spirit of the fear of God, you find that without much struggle, you are able to do the very next ingredient that makes for revival, which is obedience to the will of God. The fear of God, <laughs> the obedience to God, are attributes we find in the life of Jonathan Edwards that helped to spark revival in his time and in his parish in Northampton, USA. So one of the uh, mantles we are praying for this morning is the spirit of revival upon our lives 
and upon the communities where we serve. The second mantle, which we find in the life of Jonathan Edwards, and in fact, all, all the mantles are like, you know, one and two, like, like gathered together, like similar. The second mantle is the spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. You will, however, not have revival without the spirit of unusual prayers, unusual prayers. And that's one of the experiences God has given me in my family and in my community recently, as we prayed for revival. Sure, we discovered happened. that individual people break out on their own and pray through the night. You find somebody praying into the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and before you yourself wake up by 5 a.m. to pray, mm -hmm. you see here the same voices from different rooms, from different locations praying. And that's the spirit. The spirit of prayer is what you harvest at a time of revival. And it's a mantle that we find in the life of Jonathan Edwards. Not only his life, but in his community, as God gave them revival. Another thing we find that happens at the time of revival is the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible said, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Mm -hmm. And so you see the interconnection or interconnectivity of these various mantles or spirits here we're talking about reverence for God being the key for the perfection of holiness in the life of a man. And God said, since we have these promises. One of my daughters had a, 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 a vision yesterday, which is shared at our family altar. And she, she had God telling, telling her that he wants to talk with her. So she moved away from where she was to another place and sat silently waiting on God to speak. And then suddenly she saw a vision where God was showing her some of the finest things that a man can have. Some of the most wonderful things a man can have. And they were just passing through her one by one. And by the time the vision finished, the Lord told her, that all these things are available. The only thing is that they are available in my presence. Hmm. So you have to be in my presence to receive the best things of life that you desire. And I'll take care of that time. They are available. If you're expecting to receive them outside of my presence, then what you're going for is worldliness. But if you can strive and bring yourself into the presence of God. There is nothing you desire. In fact, the Bible said, more than what you can ask or think, more than what you can imagine, there are great things, wonderful things, fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. They are in the presence of God. And this is what revival brings. Whenever revival comes to a life or a community, you will find transformation on every side. You will find good things happening. You will find like government remembering a community and coming to change the face of that community suddenly. You will find the good things that you've been desiring in family, in community, in parishes. You will find a revival is like one key that opens all the doors to the desires of one's heart. And like I said, there is no revival without prayer. When I talk about prayer, I mean fire power. I don't mean the normal, you know, gentleman prayers. I mean prayers that commit you, commit your time. Prayers that carry you, drive you. The prayer itself, the spirit of prayer drives you. You find yourself doing the things that you thought were not possible when the spirit gets a hold upon your spirit. Mm. So this prayer 
unusual praying is one of the mantles that we find in Jonathan Edwards' life. And we're going to pray this morning that the Lord will put us through that same fire, through that same system that will help us not pray gentleman or ladylike prayers, but prayers that break the yoke. Prayers that, you know, bomb the, the, the locations where the devil had built his uh, monodromes. Another mantle we find in Jonathan Edwards' life is a heartfelt, a life of heartfelt weeping, crying before the Lord. Crying before the Lord is not what happens every time. It is what happens at a time of revival. When somebody really breaks down, it, mm -hmm. this is the system that destroys sin in the life of a man. When you are able to weep before the Lord, when you are able to cry, this was the key to David's revival. In, in uh, Psalm 51 verse 10, David cried and he said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Mm. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. That is David. God has used this particular a uh, portion of scripture to change my life and change the life of my own community. Because the Lord told me to teach members of the church where I serve how to cry. And I tell you, I was coming from a strange place because I used to think, I formerly thought that God was not a sentimental person. He doesn't look at your tears. He's just, a, a, he's just looking at your, the, the right principles. You should just bring the right principles before God and he will answer you. You don't just come to cry. But of late, God has told me that he's a sentimental person and he looks at your tears. The Bible said that this poor man cried and God heard him. You know? So God hears and looks at our heartfelt weeping. One of the things we pray for this morning is for God to break our hearts, to be able to weep before him. And from my experience, when we do that, he sets us on fire. May that fire locate each and every one of us this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The last man so in Jonathan's, Jonathan Edwards' life that I want to talk about is the spirit of missions. <laughs> Jonathan Edwards was a writer. He wrote so many books. And the one that moved the world of missions was the one that he called the end for which God created the world, the okay. life of David Brenner. This particular book inspired thousands of missionaries throughout the 19th century. One man's work, one man's work, one man's book gave birth to thousands of missionaries in that century. That's a mantle. Mm. At the end of the day, no matter what we're able to get from God, if he does not download to the issue of soul winning, then we have wasted heaven's time and our own time. Doesn't matter what God puts in us. Doesn't matter the kind of fire. Doesn't matter the kind of glory that we see. Everything must download to the issue of soul winning. It must download to the issue of missions. Jesus is waiting for his bride from every tribe of this world, from every ethnic. Jesus is waiting for his bride. So whatever it is we have in God must at the end of the day download to the issue of winning souls. That is the only relevance we can find. So we're going to begin to pray, praying for personal revival and revival in our communities. Praying for the spirit of prayer to fall on us. 
So we can engage in unusual praying that draws down the hand of God in revival. Praying for an attitude of heartfelt weeping in the presence of God. This is the kind of attitude that destroys incumbent sinful habits that do not want to go. And also praying for the spirit of missions. God is going to answer us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, Ezekiel 36, 26, the Lord said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This morning, I pray and ask the Lord, remove the heart of stone from me and give me a heart of flesh. When God helps you with the heart of flesh, then you can feel what God feels. You can feel total hatred for sin. Yes, you can feel what Jesus passed through on the cross. There are these basic feelings that are important for breaking a man and turning a man around. May God do it for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In a few minutes, we talk about Jonathan Edwards before we begin to pray. He was born in October 5th, 1703, died on March 22nd, 1758. So we find that he didn't live long or too long, but his life is still speaking on earth today. Jonathan was an American preacher of revival and a congregational pastor, like many of us are. He played a critical role in shaping what is called the First Great Awakening. The First Great Awakening happened in the 1730s and 1740s in Britain and North America. We're talking about Christian revivals that spawned out of a man's life. So Jonathan oversaw some of those revivals especially in 1733 to 1735, in his own parish in Northampton, Massachusetts. My question this morning is, what will God do in the parish where you pastor, if you're a pastor? What will God do in the ministry where you're working for God, if you're a minister? After this morning's session, I expect the fire that God will put on each of us to transcend, flow down, like the oil upon the people we work with in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm. 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 Jesus. Jesus. In 1741, it was Jonathan Edwards that preached that unforgettable sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, in a place called Enfield in Connecticut, USA. The background to this preaching was that Enfield was a location in America where the revival could not reach. The people were hard-hearted, like where many of us are working today, where people are hard-hearted. I want to tell us that an inflamed gospel, a gospel that is backed with a spirit of revival, a gospel that is preached with the fear of God will break hearts any day. This is what happened to this Enfield community as Jonathan Edwards preached to them. In fact, history has that he did not even finish that message because as he began to preach, after a little time, there was a very big impact that people began to shriek People began to cry out, crying and weeping for their sins. The crying became so loud that Edward was forced to discontinue the sermon. Instead, the pastors that were around went down among the people and began to pray for them. And many of them came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on that day. I can, I can feel it. I can imagine it. This same atmosphere from heaven. Hmm. This same spirit 
coming down upon our lives and upon our ministries Amen. after this morning's prophetic impartation. Amen. May God answer us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May those hard hearts that sit at our sermons every Sunday morning be broken. Amen. May tears come from their, come from their eyes. Amen. May God draw them to himself by Allah. a spiritual force that Amen. is beyond what an ordinary pastor can do. Amen. May those hearts break and change Amen. and begin Amen. to fear God. Amen. May they break into prayers of the spirit. Amen. Even when they did not control it by themselves. Amen. May the Amen. Spirit of God pull our people Amen. and change their dynamics, change Amen. their situations, change Amen. their circumstances. Amen. And by the force of revival, ah, ah, drop ah, them ah, to the presence ah, 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 of our very Amen. Father. May Amen. we begin to see changes. Amen. Oh, every oh man God. of God, every woman of God needs to see changes. Amen. A man yeah. of God resigned. This is a true yes. story. A man of God resigned from ministry hmm. and went into, into taking care of burials, burying people all over his city. And in one of those burials, somebody asked him, man of God, how can you resign from ministry and what you are doing is becoming a burial administrator? And that man of God shook his head and answered. He said, I was frustrated in ministry. I worked in John Lampton's life for seven years. John was a drunkard. As a minister of God, I worked upon his life for seven years. And after seven years, John died. And he died a drunkard. I worked in Mr. Cyril's life. Mr. Cyril was a fornicator when I met him. And he was in my church for 10 years. And after that, Cyril still died a fornicator. I worked in Mary's life. Mary and her husband, Christopher, we are serial beaters and fighters in marriage. And when they died, after so many years, under my ministry, they still died beaters and fighters in ministry. This man resigned from ministry because he couldn't see change. He couldn't see transformed lives. And I tell you, deep in the heart of every minister, this is a major issue. If you're not able to see lives changing, if you're not able to see situations and circumstances changing, oh, ministry is tortuous. But if the fire of revival comes down and God himself begins to walk upon the lives of men, you will sit aside and begin to see that what Jesus Christ died for is real. I tell you, my brother, my sister, what we have in our hands is more than money. Jesus is real. The transformation he brings is real. But you as a man and as a woman of God, what are you in ministry for? Do you desire what Jesus died for? Do you desire change in your community? Do you desire change in that, that small congregation that you pastor? We are the Holy Ghost himself, like a porter, who sits upon the love of each person and begin to walk upon them and begin to bring changes that man cannot, cannot produce. This is our heart desire this morning. This is what God wants to bet in our lives. And may we be available to him to begin to make it happen. I want you to begin to pray in the spirit as we begin to ask the Lord for the spiritual revival upon our lives. Let the mantle of revival that was upon Edward's life come upon my life this morning, oh Lord. Mm. Father, give me a double portion of that anointing. Yeah, Lord, give me a double portion of that anointing. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit at this time. Thank 
Sometimes the things that happen years that you have forgotten, and God will reveal them so you can repent from them. In Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, the Bible, your David said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. I want us to pray that prayer, asking God to search our hearts and reveal anything that is not right with him. Go ahead and begin to pray for yourself. This is the seed that makes for revival in a man's life. But I give me a good foundation, a mantle of revival to fall upon me, spiritual revival to fall upon me, to my foundations, O Lord. Give me a good foundation, dig into my foundation, give me a good foundation, dig into my foundation, give me a good foundation, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your name in the name Thank you, Lord. Let it be exposed. Thank you, Lord. Let it be exposed. Let it be exposed. In Jesus' name, let me pray. Let it be convicted. So not to repent. Next, we're going to pray that God will break any spirit of stubbornness and any hardness of heart that is hiding inside us. These are the negative spirits that reject revival. These are the negative spirits that fight against revival. The spirit of stubbornness. You will see a man knowing that if I can just drop this particular aspect of my life, I will have a breakthrough. But by that spirit of stubbornness, that hardness of heart, he will continue in his godless ways, even when he knows that this will lead to death. That kind of spirit must die so that the mantle of revival can come upon us. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, Hosea 10, 12, the Bible said, So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. 
Let's go ahead and begin to pray. Break every spirit of stubbornness, oh God. Destroy hardness of heart from me, O Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Almighty Father, I pray that every spirit of stubbornness in my life will die. But I break them up and destroy. I break them up and destroy. Every hardness of heart. Not uproot you from wherever it is hiding. Not uproot you from wherever it is hiding. Uproot you from wherever it is hiding. In the name of Jesus. Almighty Jesus, remove her nest of heart from me, Father. Remove the spirit of stubbornness from me. Help me to become obedient to your spirit. Help me to become obedient to your spirit. Help me to become obedient to your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Next, we're going to pray for God to give us sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. More than we have ever experienced. Many of us on this platform are already working with the Spirit of God. But I tell you that the room for expansion is the biggest room. There are levels, there are depths of the Spirit that we don't know yet. Let the Spirit open us up to those depths, those levels. Let him take us deeper into relationship with the Holy Spirit that will totally uproot us from everything worldly and help us to operate in the spiritual. I want us to go ahead and pray. Ephesians 4.30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. As we get closer to him, we are immune from grieving him because we become one with him. Let us pray for closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and pray. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I pray, Lord, as you did in Nathan Edward's life, Father, draw me deeper to a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But I draw me deeper in the name of Jesus. But I draw me deeper in the name of Jesus. But I draw me deeper. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Find favor, God, in you, and serve and serve you. Find favor, God, in you, 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 Allow my life to 
Our final prayer point, which we'll pray in two minutes, is to ask God to download and put on us the spirit of revival, the spirit of unusual praying, the spirit of heartfelt weeping, the spirit of missions. Let these mantles download upon us that we'll begin to see these things working in our lives and ministry. Even from this morning, let new things become apparent in our lives and ministries. As we pray for this revival and the spirit of unusual praying, God will do it in us immediately. Because like we said in Matthew 7, 11, he said, if those of us that, that evil know how to give good gifts, why, he, why will himself, God, not give us the good things mm -hmm. we ask for? May the Lord give us the Holy Ghost in a new way this morning. Let the spirit of revival and prayer, unusual prayer, come upon us. Open your mouth and pray for yourself now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, oh God, Almighty oh Father, God, oh I pray God, that you download oh upon me and upon everyone that has been on this planet this month, but the mantle of revival, the spirit of revival, the mantle of prayer, the spirit of unusual prayer, the mantle of transfer, the presence of God, the spirit of mission, and it is download upon me, Father, put them upon me in an unusual way, in a great dimension. Let this thing begin to walk in my life in a new way. So, let them begin to walk in me in a greater dimension. in jesus name we pray Amen. i believe we'll continue with that prayer hereafter but our time is up so i hand over to god's servant pastor Lang. Oh God. Words are not enough to say oh thanks to God for the gift of Dr. Imajo. Thank you and thank you so much, sir, for making yourself available for God to download himself into you, um, not just to be a speaker, but a practical missionary whose commitment and consecration and dedication and big faith has, has inspired me beyond words. Um, there are people who lead prayer, and that's where it ends. Dr. Majo has done things in the, in the mission field that is unbelievable, mind-blowing. And uh, I want to thank God for your life, sir. You are one of the great 